Good morning. Today's lesson is 5.4. So today we're going to be doing percentage of a quantity. Our essential question, how do you find a percentage of a quantity? Let's unlock the problem. A typical family of four uses about 400 gallons of water each day. And 30% of this water is for outdoor activities, such as gardening. How many gallons of water does a typical family of four use each day for outdoor activities? Well, will the number of gallons of water for the outdoor activities be greater than or less than 200 gallons? Explain. So it's going to be less than 200 gallons since 30% is less than half. Because if we have 400 gallons, half of that is going to be 200 gallons. And 30% is less than 50%. Therefore, we know it's going to be less. So one way is we can use ratio reasoning. So using this bar model, you can see that they have it broken into 10 pieces and 10 pieces of 400. So that means each of these pieces is going to be worth 40. So there's going to be 10 pieces of 40. And if I'm looking at just the 30%, I'm only going to be looking at three of those. So 40 plus 40 plus 40 is 120 because this whole thing equals 400 if you add these 40s up. This is all going to be 400. And 30% of it or a third of it is 120. So the model shows that 100% represents 400 gallons. So you've got to think 30% is three groups of 10%. So if you divide the model into 10 equal groups... So you're, to find the value of 10% of 400, you have 10% of 400. I want to show you a little trick. Anytime you see the word of, it means to multiply. So 10% of 400 is saying 10% times 400. Now the easiest way to do that is to turn it into a fraction like we did in the last one. So 10% is the same thing as 110. So they did 110 times the 400. Remember, whenever you have a whole number, you're going to put the 1 underneath. So you have 1 times 400, which is 400, and then you have 10 times 1, which is 10. And 400 divided by 10 is 40. So 30% of 400 is going to be 3 times the 40. And 3 times 40 is 120 because we have 30%, right? We were looking at just the 10%. So let's do another way. So another way is you can find the value of 30% of 400 by multiplying. So write the percentage as a rate per 100. In order to do that, you're going to multiply 30 over 100 of 400. So 30 over 100, so 30% is the same thing as 30 over 100 and times the 400 because remember... Whenever you see the word of, it means multiply. So 30 times 400. And because this is, we're trying to write this as a percent, putting it over 100, okay? So 30 times 400, okay, over 1. Now, it's a big number. 30 times 400, what we can do is, do you remember, cross multiplying. So I can look to see 30 and 1. I can't really cross multiply that. But I could cross multiply the 100 and the 400 because 100 goes into itself one time and 100 goes into 400 four times. So that means I'm doing 30 times 4, which is 120 over 1. So 120 or 120 over 1, which is the same thing as 120. So 30% of 400 gallons is 120 gallons. Now, if we were to do 65 of 300. So remember, 65, the word of means times. So you're doing 65% times 300. So first, let's convert the 65 into a fraction. So we're going to have 65 over 100, right? Because it's 100%. So that means I'm doing 65 over 100 times 300 over 1. So I can do this all the way out. I can do 65 times the 300, or I can cross multiply and make it a little easier on myself. 100 goes into itself one time, and 100 goes into 300 three times. So now my problem is a little bit easier. 
I have 65 over 1 times 3 over 1. And 65 times 3, right here, 65 times 3. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times 6 is 18. Plus 1 is 19. So we get 195. Because this is 195 over 1, which is essentially a whole number, 195. Charla earns $4,000 per month. She spends 40% of her salary on rent and 15% of her salary on groceries. How much money does Charla have left over for other expenses? So step one, first we need to add to find the total percents that Charla's salary is used for rent and groceries. So that means she spends 40% and 15%. If we add the 40% and the 15% together, then we're going to get the total that she's already using from her salary. 40 plus 15 is 55. So that means 55% of her salary is used for items, right? Step two, we are going to subtract the total from the 100% to find what's left over. So if I take the total of 100% and I subtract the 55 that she's using, then that means I'm going to have 45% over. And that's what we're trying to find out is how much money is left over. In order to do that, now I'm going to step three, write the percent from step two, which is 45. So remember that is, if I write it as a fraction, it's going to be 45 over 100 as a rate. And we're going to multiply that times 100. So now we've done that. So now we're going to do 45 over 100 times her salary, which is $4,000, to find out what percent this is. So we're going to put this over 1. So we have 45 times 4,000 and 100 times 1. Now that's going to be a really big number if I do 4,000 times 45, right? It's going to take me a minute. But I can cross multiply too. I can take this 100 because I know 100 goes into itself one time. This 4,000 and I know 100 goes into it 40 times little bit more manageable. So 40 times 45, 5 times a 0 is 0, 5 times 4 is 20. Do my little um, space saver, 4. Now I'm on this one, 4 times 0 is 0, 4 times 4 is 16. So I have, and now I'm going to add them up. Oops, they're not very well, easy to see. 0 plus 0 is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0, 6 plus 2 is 8, and one plus nothing is one. So I have one, eight, zero, zero. I have 1,800. So she is going to have $1,800 left over for other expenses. All right, so next we're gonna find the percentage of a quantity. So we've got 25% of 320. So 25% is the same thing as 25 over 100, which could be reduced to one quarter. So that's why they did that. So 25% equals one quarter. So I'm going to use one quarters to make it equal. So I've got my 320 and I broke it up into four groups because we want to know what one quarter is, right? So one quarter of, remember, of is the same thing as times of 320. So we're breaking this up into four groups, okay? So we do like this. We have one times 320. 4 times 1, which is 4. Now, how many times can 4 go into 320? It goes in 80 times equally. So that means each of these is going to be worth 80. And since I only want to know what 25% is or 1 quarter, my answer is going to be 80. Okay, so let's do a few more of these. So we have 80% of 50. So remember, of means multiply. And then we need to turn these into fractions. So we've got 80%, 80 over 100. We did this in the last lesson. And then 50, because it's a whole number, we're going to put it over 1. So 80 times 50 is 4,000. And 100 times 1 is 100. And 100 goes into 4,000 40 times. So the answer is 40. 80% of 50 is 40. So same thing here. We've got 175 over 100 times, because of means times, 24 over 1. So 100 times 1 is 100. And then we've got 175 times 24. I'm going to do that over here just because here. Follow down here because I don't have enough room. 
times 24. Oh, this is 175 times 24. So I'm going to do my ones place first. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 7 is 28. Plus the 2 is 30. Put my 0 there. 4 times 1 is 4. Plus the 3 is 7. Then I'm going to put my space saver. I'm done with my ones. Now I'm on my tens place. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 7 is 14. Plus 1 is 15. 2 times 1 is 2. Plus 1 is 3. Then I'm going to add these up. I get 0, 0. 5 and 7 is 12. Carry my 1. 3 and 1 is 4. So I get 4,200. So this is 4,200. Now 100 can go into 4,000. We already said 40 times. And 100 goes into 200 two times. So that means this is going to be 42. So my answer to this one is going to be 42. So 175% of 24 is 42. All right, let's do the next one. We've got 60% of 20. So we're going to change my 60 into a fraction. 60 over 100. Of means times. Then I've got 210 over the 1 because it's a whole number. So now I'm going to do 60 times 210. So there's my 210 times 60. 0 times 0 is 0. 0 times 1 is 0. 0 times 2 is 0. Put my space saver. Now I'm on my tens place. 6 times 0 is, is 0. 6 times 1 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. Add them up. I get 0, 0, 6, 2, 1. So you get 1, 2, 6, 0, 0. So we have 1, 2, 6, 0, 0 over 100 times 1 is 100. And then 100 can go into this a lot of times. So let's do it like this. 100 goes in, can't go into 1, can't go into 12, but it can go into 126 one time. Okay? And then I'm going to subtract. I get 26, bring down my 0. 100 goes into 260 two times. 2 times 100 is 200. I've got a 6 and a 0, bring down my last one. 100 goes into 600 six times, and it goes evenly with nothing left over. So the answer to this is 126. All right, this next question kind of brings us back to the other one. So we have a jar of 125 marbles total. 4% of the marbles are green. 60% of the marbles are blue, and the rest are red. And we want to know how many red ones there are. Well, first of all, 4% are green plus the 60% that are blue. We're going to add that together. So 64% are is not red. That's how many are not red because they're blue or green. So everything is out of 100%. So 100% minus the 64, whoops, minus the 64% is going to give me it's going to give me 36%. So that means 36% of the the marbles in the jar are red. Now, if the total marble is 125, then it's going to be 36% of 125, or again, of means times. So that means it's going to be 36 out of 100 times 125 over 1 is going to give me my answer. So 100 times 1 is 100, and 36 times 125, let's erase some of this. So we've got 36 times 125. First, I do my ones position. 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times 2 is 12. Plus 3 is 15. 6 times 1 is 6. Plus the 1 is 7. Done with my ones. Now I'm on to my tens. Use my space saver. 3 times 5 is 15. Carry my 1. 3 times 2 is 6. Plus the 1 is 7. 3 times 1 is 3. So then I add them together, I get 0, 10, 14, 15, 3 and 1 is 4. So I get 4, 5, 0, 0. And then let me erase this so we can have some room so we can see. So 100 can go into 450, or 4,500. So if I did 100, it goes into 4,500. 100 can't go into 4, can't go into 45, but it goes into 450. It goes 4 times because 1 times 4 is 400. I subtract. I get 50. Bring down my 0. 
100 goes into 500 five times. Five times 100 is 500 with nothing left over. So my answer is going to be 45. So that means there were 45 red marbles. Okay, last but not least on this page, there are 32 students in Mr. Monroe's class of 62.5 of the students are girls. How many boys are in the class? So first of all, let's find out how many of those 32 are girls, and then we'll find out how many there are boys. So we've got 62.5% of, which means multiply, 32 students, that's my girls, so let's figure that out. So 65 over 100 times 32 over 1. So when I multiply 62.5 times 32, I'm actually going to get 2,000 over 100. And 100 goes into 2,000. So that's going to equal 20 because 100 goes into 2,000 20 times. So that means there were 20 girls. And if there's 32 students, I take my 32 students, I minus those 20 girls, and two from zero is two, and one. So then that means I have 12 boys. 20 girls plus 12 boys equals 32 students total. Okay, I'm just gonna do a few more. So we have 60% of 90. So again, we've gotta change this to a fraction, 60 over 100, of means times, and then my 90 is a whole number, so I'm gonna put it over one. Now I can do this a couple ways. I can do 60 times 90, which will take me a few minutes, and then 100 times 1, or I can cross multiply. I can't cross and multiply the 60 and the 1, but I can cross and multiply the 90 and the uh, 100. And I know that 10 can go into both of these numbers. 10 goes into 100 10 times, and, and then 10 goes into 90 9 times. So this would be 9 and this would be 10. So that means I would have 60 over 10 times nine over one. A little easier to do and I wouldn't have to reduce as much. It's up to you. Um, 60 times nine is 540 and one times 10 is 10. 540 and over 10. 10 can go into 540 54 times equally with nothing left over. Okay, so I'm gonna have you do the rest on your own. We're gonna have a Think Central. And if you need my help, I will be on the carpet. Good luck.